Like most politicians, it wasn't easy getting Julius Malema to open up about anything other than politics. My life is politics. Even when I propose a girl, I, I use political analysis. What do you say? <laughs> Our conversation was either going to be about politicking or maybe his love for local music. I play music a lot. Uh, uh, when I'm alone, uh, I play music, I DJ. When I'm in the company of friends, I DJ. Uh, and uh, predominantly deep house and uh, South African music because I think that uh, uh, both quiet and dance music in South Africa is unique and is of our own making and we must celebrate it. And I think I was going to be DJing if I was not, if I was not uh, in a, a political space. But the last place you'd expect to find Julius Malema is at a Western Cape beachfront. The man himself admits that catching a wave is not his thing. The waves are so scary for me, but I do try to get in, especially the, the Deben Beach, which is much more warmer than the Cape Town one, which is very cold. Born in Sisheho Limpopo on the 3rd of March 1981, Malema was largely raised by his grandmother. It was difficult for his epileptic domestic worker mom to make ends meet. So, unlike most of his schoolmates, he couldn't afford to go on school trips to the beach and thus he never learned to swim. But his son Radanang loves the ocean. Uh, personally, I wouldn't take a decision to come to the beach because uh, it has never been part of me. But uh, my son likes places like this because uh, during... Uh, School holidays, they must go on a vacation and when they go back to school, they must explain uh, what they've seen during holidays, the places they visited and all that. So even if I don't like being here, I'm now forced to come and uh, be a supportive parent and be there so that uh, I can avoid any possible danger. The feisty politician softens up when he speaks of his seven-year-old. Malema says Radanang is thriving. He must be exposed to different things. He plays rugby at school, something that I wouldn't have thought of. I mean, ordinarily we think of football and doesn't know anything about football. Uh, it's rugby, it's wrestling and all those. Uh, yeah. So, and he goes to a school which was... Uh, uh, only Africans. Uh, so they just introduced now English and uh, English lessons and all those things. But the culture is purely white African culture in that school. Uh, he seems to be enjoying it. Development. Despite the boy's interesting hobbies, Malema says the apple didn't fall far from the tree. I think it's good. Uh, he, he must take uh, after his father. Uh, uh, the mother is smart and I think uh, he's got uh, a, a bit of that. Uh, sometimes when he speaks from the other side, uh, I hear myself speaking and I'm like shocked and at the same time laughing. Uh, why is this guy speaking like this? And sometimes he even says to uh, colleagues there that, uh, you, you know, you make me speak like my father because you're not listening to me. Yeah, so... It's very exciting uh, to see the young Julius uh, growing up. Malema says he can be quite a strict dad, but he doesn't often have to put his foot down. My son subjects himself to the discipline of the school and he doesn't want to behave differently. And I've told him many a times, I don't want to be called to school because of your misbehaving and all that. Yeah, so when I, I, I actually said to him, I don't want to be called to your school because of your misconduct. I says, what's that? What's misconduct? And I had to look for something and oh, misbehaving. Oh, no, daddy, I'm a cool guy. I don't have problem. Malema didn't know his own father, though, but says growing up in the ANC, he was never short of positive male role models. His grandmother and late mother have refused to divulge the identity or whereabouts of his father, and Malema says he has no desire at all to find him. You know, the gentleman that they say is my father is one of many people who came to say, no, uh, they are actually my father. One of them is from uh, um, Soweto. He says, no, I, 
impregnated your mother when she was in Soweto. My mother was never in Soweto all her life. Uh, so you can see that I've got too many, uh, you know, fathers all over. And it's very good. I'm actually rich that people want to be my parents. So it's very interesting. Uh, I think I'm a cool uh, child. That's why everybody wants to be my father. My mother died uh, almost uh, seven, eight years ago. So she was there. I mean, uh, when she passed away, that uh, immediate growing up came to be, and as if that was the you know the end of the stage. Then Radhanam was born. I had to grow up again to become a father. I mean, uh, my mother passed away in August, and Radhanam was born in October, same year. Uh, so that was a, a, a turning point in my life where. I had to take charge and become a responsible person, including becoming a father. Ayanda Ali Payne, Cape Town.